Hi there, higher running coach and Hoga Athletes, H. Candy here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about concepts like 80-20 training and zone 2 low heart rate training, topics I've touched on over the years, over the last 15 years of doing training talks here on YouTube, but with a little twist, because I do these shorter versions of these talks on my Instagram, at Sage Canada, or TikTok, or even tweet them out, or I guess it's on X now, but getting in the nuance and the details is what really matters as a coach, and you see a lot of influencers kind of preaching these rules nonchalantly, I should say, you know, they've run a couple of marathons, and now uh, they're fitness influencers, which is great, but I think there's a lot of misconceptions, especially around like zone two training, low heart rate training. And the first thing I always get into with heart rate training is you need an accurate data recording. So, you know, I use the Chorus Armband Strap, full disclaimer, I am sponsored by them, but this strap, just like a chest strap, uh, is a lot more accurate than just relying on a wrist strap. A lot of wrist straps are not very accurate. Uh, truth be told, my wrist straps have never worked for me. Sometimes there's interference with uh, chest straps as well. This armband strap is amazingly accurate most of the time, and it's a lot more comfortable because I could put it on my bicep instead of having to go across the chest. Uh, sometimes it feels like it hurts your breathing when it's too tight, and the tightness does matter as well as humidity and things like that. But you know, r wearing a running pack, an ultra vest or schemo pack, it, the chest strap gets in the way. It's a lot bigger. This is great. Check it out. Koros, that is a sponsor plug again. Uh, if you check out with the GPS watch and enter code SAGE, you do get a free gift item from the store. So just keep that in mind. Accurate data matters, but your max heart rate number also matters. And it's highly genetic. It's changing over time. Some people's max heart rate, like, you know, I'm 38 years old. My max heart rate is probably around 176 right now. Uh, for a lot of people, it would be a lot higher if you're a similar age to me, but it might change as you get older, it usually goes down as you get older, and it might change depending on what kind of fitness tests you do to get that max heart rate. So a lot of people I say don't even know their true 100% max heart rate, and if you're working at a percentage of max heart rate and working down from there for your different zones, your zones could be way off. But zone two, uh, getting back to the topic, zone two is a wide range. For a lot of people, it could be almost a minute per mile type of pace range, 40 seconds per kilometer. So for a lot of people, if you're going by pace, maybe you're a road runner, uh, you have your marathon PR pace or your half marathon PR pace. You know that. You've, you've got that down. Uh, it's probably a more advanced topic if you've, you know, getting closer to your potential. You could extrapolate off of your marathon pace and say, hey, you know what? My marathon pace isn't truly easy. It's race pace, right? Uh, but, you know, maybe if I'm running 45 seconds, maybe a minute per mile slower, 40 seconds per kilometer slower than marathon pace, to even two minutes per mile slower than marathon pace, for a lot of people, that's generally going to be kind of in the zone two realm, right? You could carry on a conversation. You feel like you're not grinding out there every day. So it's it's whatever heart rate you average for that. You go out on a longer, easy run, 10 miles, 16K. That's probably going to be around zone two. And it's going to be a bit slower than your marathon race pace. Now, if you're a true beginner, if you're running, you know, a four hour, five hour marathon, maybe, uh, then your marathon pace might be very close to, to zone two pace, right? Uh, a lot of beginner runners, they go out the door at a pace faster than what they could hold for a full marathon because uh, they haven't built up their aerobic base or they're just you know getting into the sport. So it's a dynamic thing. It changes. And obviously with ultra trail running, it changes a lot too. You kind of throw pace out the window on the trails, right? With a lot of vert. Likewise, if it's really hot or humid or there's a huge headwind, things like that, uh, it could slow you down a lot. But the reason why we always preach zone two easy aerobic based training is mainly an injury prevention thing. There's no magical thing where if your heart rate gets into zone three, it's going to be this big disaster uh, when you should be having an easy day, right? It's actually a good aerobic stimulus. If I wasn't worried about getting injury, injured or burning out mentally or getting, you know, exhausting my muscle fibers, I would go out and do a tempo every day. That would get me in shape really fast. You know, tempo run every day, VO2 max sessions every other, every three days. That will get you in shape very, very fast uh, as long as you don't get injured. However, your peak fitness is going to happen real quick and then it's going to erode real quick. So you're getting yourself into peak shape in four, five, six weeks very easily doing high intensity, but if the fitness base isn't there, it's going to be really hard to hold that peak fitness, and that peak is going to be a lot lower than if you did things more strategically with a training plan where you had aerobic base training for 
six to 10 weeks first uh, with some tempo runs and strategically increase the intensity and mileage over longer periods of time, you could hit a higher peak of fitness and sustain that peak of fitness for a lot longer, especially if you have a taper phase and things like that. So it's great if you're doing multiple peak races over say a summer season uh, or you know fall marathon season, spring marathon season types of things. So that's really the reason why we do it is that the impact force of running too fast on your easy days is stressful. And when you get fatigued, you start getting sloppy with your form, so you're more likely to get injured. And then mentally, it's really hard to go out every day and push the pace, right? A lot of beginner runners, especially, they're really eager to push the pace. You always think, you know, if I'm not straining, I'm not improving my fitness, you know, but you want to train, don't strain. You got to train smart and you have to control a lot of days and hold yourself back, right? You get peer pressured maybe in with a faster running group or faster peers. Uh, you go a little too fast in your easy days, common mistake. Now, where does 80-20 concept training come into place? Well, 80-20 is the general rule that if you break down your whole weekly mileage, say you're running 100 kilometers a week, 80 kilometers of that would be zone two or zone one, a lot of easy pace miles. It could include warm ups and cool downs before workouts. It could include most of your long runs, more on that later. We do do advocate higher intensity long runs for more advanced runners, but you know, 80% of your mileage zone two easy below the threshold is what we say. And then 20% in general could be higher intensity, right? Tempo runs, up tempo runs, we say zone three, zone four, zone five. So it's it's a very 80-20 rule. I've gone into this over the last 15 years on here a lot. It's a general rule of thumb though. So it changes dynamically as your training progresses and what, what your goals are and what your level is at. So, you know, starting off as a beginner, maybe we have you go 95% all easy running or 100% all easy running because it's just about getting your mileage up and staying in control. And then we start sprinkling in some actual speed work like strides or, you know, pickups on some easy runs. We're not even worrying about tempo runs, lactate threshold or intervals, high intensity stuff. Uh, so we're going 95% all easy zone one, zone two for weeks maybe. Then maybe it changes to 90-10, right? So 90% of your mileage is easy. We throw in a 20 minute tempo run, boom, you got 10% of your miles at threshold pace, zone three, zone four. So then at the peak of training, maybe it's more 80-20. Maybe it's 70-30 though. At some point, if you're training for a 5K and you got some anaerobic high intensity intervals, uh, there might be a higher level of intensity and it's all relative to that percentage of your total volume or weekly mileage and your experience level, injury history, things like that. So it's not a set in stone rule is what I'm saying and it's very dynamic. Now, getting on the topic of dynamic plans, and again, this is a business plug. Coach Sandy and I do, uh, that's Sandy Nightpaver, check out her channel, Running Wild. We do sell training plans for any service, any distance at higherrunning.com. Uh, we have very experienced racing anything from 5K on the track, uh, half marathon marathons on the roads, to running ultra marathons up to 100 miles in the mountains. And we have plans for that at different levels. So check that out, higher running. We are strategic in our 16 week plans, for example, with breaking the training into phases. So it's not always 80-20 training. It is a lot of zone two running, but there's a lot of zone three, zone four, and zone five running in there. A lot of pure speed work, recommendations for doing strength work, and having a well-rounded training plan. Uh, so it's not, it's an ex ex extremely complex thing, but also extremely simple. Uh, but I think it does a disservice when you see social media posts and sensationalist articles, uh, influencers maybe, that don't exactly know what they're talking about, promoting a certain way of training, certain concepts at a very basic level. We're just scratching the surface here. So uh, check out our training plans. We also have partnered with Tracer. Uh, they have a mobile app. Tracer Fitness, I'll put the link in the description below. We have a dynamic training plan using AI technology. It's our higher running 50K program uh, that you could sign up for. It's a monthly membership basis and it's a dynamic program because it takes into account your level as well as your work family schedule. If something comes up, the feedback it provides, it will change the training schedule, but it was derived from a lot of data and uh, our philosophy at Higher Running that Coach Sandy and I have meticulously worked with Tracer on uh, to develop this plan with our, our methods uh, for trail moderate trail 50K program, and it changes on the fly. So if you get sick, 
If you feel a little extra tired, maybe it could, it could dynamically change some of your weekly schedule with the workouts as well as what level you're at and how much time commitment you have to train. So check that out, Tracer Fitness. That is the higher earning 50K program on there, business plug. But it's kind of the idea that things change over time in a training cycle and we have this on our static plans as well at Higher Running, uh, it's not just 80-20 training. It's not just a lot of zone two training. It's mixing in workouts over the weeks at different times to strategically build your fitness so that you peak at the right time at your goal race. And then hopefully you could sustain, recover and sustain a fairly high level of fitness and ebb and flow with it during your racing season. So we're always building off of a residual base of miles, so to speak, and you could ebb and flow with that, but how we introduce intensity is very strategic and very important, and it kind of cuts to the core of the idea of getting into higher heart rate training values, high aerobic efforts in the thresholds. Again, check out my training talks. I've done a lot of training talks in the last 15 years on this channel uh, with tempo, threshold, up tempo, into VO2 max. Of course, the name of this channel, VO2 max training. So. That is a business plug, but again, thanks for all your support. Again, check out Super Thanks if you like these types of videos. It helps us out a lot, supporting us financially, as well as the Patreon supporters that really keep this channel alive. Google AdSense has kind of been dwindling for me. Uh, it's been a tough, tough year uh, with that. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for all your support. Check out Tracer Fitness, uh, Arch Plans at Higher Running. Check out Sandy's channel. Subscribe on there. Uh, and thanks to title sponsor Hoka, keeping my running dreams alive. I've got some more running races, exciting running races schedule planned for you this summer. And of course, I just did that ultra marathon ski race. Uh, Going to have some footage from that as well as more mountain adventures, any service, any distance. Comment below with training talk topics that you would like to hear about. Thanks for thumbs up, liking, subscribing to these videos. Really means the world to me. Let me know how you're doing in the comments below as well. And stay tuned for more Via2Max Productions.